Coming up in news tonight, armed suspects lead police on a high-speed chase after robbing a super-value grocery store. Police investigating the country's latest homicide after a man was found dead inside his Palm Tree Avenue home. Government is set to make a major announcement on a new mortgage relief plan tomorrow. Plus, the Deputy Prime Minister announces a possible pay-as-you-go electricity scheme. Welcome to Our News. I'm Dana Smith. Thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight, one man is in police custody and two others still at large after the trio robbed Atlantic Drive Super Value Grocery Store near Sandyport. Police say after accosting employees and shoppers at gunpoint and making off with cash, the man then led police on a high-speed chase through the streets of New Providence, which ended in a gunfight in Jones Heights. Police say the men opened fire and police returned the shots, resulting in two of the suspects being shot. After seven, um, three men pulled up in a vehicle at the store. They accosted the manager. They went in the store, held all of the employees at bay, fired off several shots. Um, it was a very traumatic situation and they took a substantial amount of cash and they fled the scene in the car. The suspects fled the scene in a silver Honda Stream station wagon, according to Assistant Commissioner of Police Stephen Dean, who said police were immediately notified and all units on the road were put on alert. And it wasn't long before police spotted the car. They were able to track the car and result in a high-speed chase. The chase went through several communities of New Providence in the western part of New Providence that went that led them into the Jones Hyde area where a car came to a halt. The suspect came out, alighted the vehicle, they began to fire the police. Police returned fire at the suspect. And I can tell you one of the suspects was shot and taken to the hospital. The two suspects fled on foot. Um, police recovered two handguns and a large amount of cash. Over in Jones Heights, the suspect's Honda Stream was left riddled with bullets, its back window blown out and rear lights shattered. Dean pointed out the bullet holes left in the police cruiser. Former Senator and Free National Movement Chairman Darren Cash was in the store at the time of the armed robbery, and he recounted the ordeal in a post on his Facebook page. He said this morning's incident was the third time he found himself in a food store during an armed robbery. Cash said, My intimate moment of inspecting the romaine lettuce was interrupted by the sounds of gunshots. Seconds later, the early bird shoppers began running to the back of the store. My first reaction was to head up to the front to confirm, help, witness for myself. That temporary moment of insanity was interrupted by two vivid realizations. First, those were gunshots I heard. All I was armed with was a head of lettuce. Two, that was apparently one of the armed assailants I just saw forcing the manager into a room of the store, powerless. If those two realizations were not enough to get me and a few others immobilized or conflicted shoppers to move, the sight of the, we presumed, still-armed robber headed towards us was enough to ignite our jet engines. Cash said he and other shoppers took cover in the women's restroom at the rear of the store. An attempt to dial 919 went nowhere, but a call to 911 was answered almost instantaneously. Another shopper who was inside the store at the time but did not want to appear on camera or be identified said she and others hid inside the store's warehouse located at the rear of the building. She said she heard gunshots but didn't recognize the sound. She only realized something was wrong when employees and shoppers began fleeing through the aisles. Shortly after that, she said two men wearing masks and armed with handguns ran past her. Dean said police are actively hunting for the other two gunmen involved in the robbery and police are already have a good idea as to who they are. He said one of the missing suspects was injured in the gunfight. It is apparent that one of the suspects who we are still looking for have been shot. And we are saying to members of the public, if anyone turns up with a gunshot wound to you, do not hide them. Anybody, any medical clinic, anyone turns up at private medical clinic, the police need to be notified right away. The police need to be notified. It is a serious offense to have anyone wanted by the police, anyone wanted for serious crime. We can tell you that these are some dangerous persons who are out there. And we are asking members of the public to turn these people in. They are somewhere and somebody home in New Providence. Someone know where these persons are right now. They are talking to someone right now. They are seeking medical help right now. We are asking you to turn them in. In his post this morning, Cash added, quote, 
This morning's unfortunate events serve as another reminder that we cannot believe the government's hype about crime. We are not safe and our lives are under constant threat from armed thugs. This government does not have a handle on violent crime and each of us is a moment away from being a crime statistic. And once again, the political discussion is vacuous. Recently, we got criticism from the leader of the opposition, but no meaningful proposed solution. Sad indeed. Well, a few hours after the super value incident, a man was found dead with gunshot wounds lying on the floor inside of his Palm Tree Avenue home. Chief Superintendent Clayton Fernander was on the scene of the country's latest homicide this afternoon. A male appeared to be in this late 50s, early uh, gentleman. Uh, he was found lifeless uh, in his home here, a one bedroom structured house lying on the floor with apparent uh, gunshot wound uh, to the body. Fernandez said the body appeared to have been lying there overnight. The victim was discovered around 2 p.m. today by family members who came by his home, a small purple structure just off Blue Hill Road. Uh, he was found there by relatives who came to check on him and they met him lying there on the floor. Police are still in the beginning stages of their investigation into this latest shooting death. Fernander appealed for anyone with any information on the incident to contact police. We don't know the motive of this uh, latest shooting, uh, but we appeal to members of the public, uh, persons who live in this area, who may have heard or seen anything, uh, to please uh, come forward. As we speak, you can see officers moving about uh, doing some door-to-door -door inquiries to see whatever information that they could uh, receive. In other news tonight, the government is expected to make a major announcement on its updated mortgage relief plan tomorrow in Parliament. State Minister for Finance Michael Halkidis recently sat down with our Kyle Joaquin to share how this new revised version of the plan is far different from the failed version put in place three years ago. The first version of government's mortgage relief had proven to be an abysmal failure assisting less than 10 homeowners, far short of the projected thousand. But now Halkidis says government is aiming for this new updated version of mortgage relief to help around 1,500. Already we have over 150 people involved, uh, enrolled. Um, we get reports monthly, so every month there's ad there are additional people being for the, for the new plan being enrolled, and you know we'll be able to give an update to Parliament on Monday, and so we're very excited about this. Mortgage relief was a major promise of the PLP leading up to the 2012 general election. In our interview, Halkidis acknowledged that this was a central plank in the, this administration's um, election campaign and something that we committed to. He said government went back to the drawing board and engaged stakeholders to produce this new plan that he calls workable. We actually have people enrolled in it, over 150 people already. All right, over a thousand people have been contacted and so we expect more to be enrolled. And um, we are, we will go to parliament to present a amended borrowers protection bill uh, we are also presenting an amendment to the Financial and Corporate Services Providers Act so that non, what they call non-traditional money lenders will now be, it's very clear that they will be regulated. He said the goal is to protect those borrowing and make the rules clearer for lenders. We learned from the, what I will call the original mortgage relief plan, part of the reason that it did not have the success that we wanted is that not only were people indebted to financial institutions for their mortgage. They were indebted, in some cases, very highly, and particularly public servants and hotel workers for consumer loans, We're talking about cars and vacation loans, uh, shop, you know, those sorts of loans um, that were secured by salary deduction. So you had people who were very, very highly leveraged. He said government found people, particularly those in hotels, taking home at times less than $50 as a result of their loan payments. But in all, Halkita says government has a lot of faith in this new version of mortgage relief and hopes this one works. Reporting for our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Amid continued concern about foreign direct investments in the country, particularly those from China, Chairman of the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce and Employers Confederation, Galwin Bo, is warning critics to be careful with their language. Uh, we have to be very careful that we don't attack a race or uh, an actual uh, people, right? If we look back at Bahamian history, um, how many successful Chinese Bahamian enterprises exist, right? So when we start thinking about the food retail industry, when we start thinking about restaurants, the tailors, 
um, and so many other things, the, the dry cleaning business, etc. How many of them were already Chinese investment? And so when we start using the term Chinese, I think it's a very dangerous precedent we're setting because whilst we may say it has nothing to do with xenophobia, the mere fact that you are titling a race it becomes xenophobic. Bo's comments come as many in the free national movement and others call for clarity from Prime Minister Perry Christie on two recent proposals. The first, a $2 billion agri-fisheries project and the second, a forestry project. Both involve Chinese and Bahamian investors and call for the lease of Crown land. Opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis has accused government of planning secret deals with its Chinese allies. Bo said a distinction must be drawn between state-owned investments and private investments. There's a very distinct difference between what I would call state-run enterprises or state-owned enterprises that have vested interest in geopolitical initiatives. They are looking at how do I move my country forward in the global economy and I manage politics. But a private enterprise, whether it's listed in Hong Kong, whether it's operating out of the United States, it may have Chinese descendants that are at the head of it, but in reality they are no different than North American private enterprises, European private enterprises, and their mission is profit. And they are shareholder driven, and their sole objective is not to influence a government for the purposes of another government. Yeah. It is to, if they're going to influence a government, is influence for their own profits. Bo said the country should remember Chinese investments have already been in the country for many years, and the tone of recent discussions surrounding the proposals ought to be softened. So I think we have to temper down when we start talking about Chinese. I think we should be looking at do we want to be um, heavily financed by state-owned enterprises that may use that leverage to get us to support them in certain political arenas versus a private enterprise that really is looking at it purely from a perspective of, say, how I operate. Bo said if there is concern about foreign direct investment in the country, then the conversation should be limited to just that. There's a lot of um, speculation about why the Chinese invest, but I think there's often been mixed by saying, well, it's Chinese state-run enterprises versus Chinese private enterprises, and I think we should make a clear distinction. And to me, more importantly, let's stop saying Chinese. If we want to talk about foreign investors, it's foreign investors. And do we want to be concentrated with one grouping of foreign investors? That's a question, um, but not in reality whether it should be Chinese or um, Chinese state-run enterprises. When our news returns, the Deputy Prime Minister announces plans for a pay-as-you-go electricity system. So stay tuned.